Hi everyone and welcome to today's screencast on the heart. Today we're going to be learning all about the basic functions of the circulatory system. So of course the heart pumps blood around the body and in the blood we transport oxygen, carbon dioxide, hydrogen ions and nutrients. The circulatory system of course also invites infections that enter your bloodstream and your body. It transports water from the digestive system to the body and the lungs. It carries waste products to the kidney so they can be removed in our urine. And it distributes the body heat when we're too warm from the internal part of our body to our skin, which is why you get all flushed when you are exercising. It also forms blood clots when you injure yourself, transports hormones around the body, maintains the pH in our tissues because hemoglobin acts as a buffer as you remember from our buffer unit and it regulates how much fluid is in our tissues it does that with the lymphatic system so today we're going to be focusing on the anatomy of the heart so where is your heart it is right here and if you look at it with the lungs involved here's the heart and then you see you've got your right lung and your left lung the right lung is a little bit larger it has three lobes as compared to the left lung if you look closely at the heart inside a body, you'll notice that it's wrapped up with this saran wrap-like tissue called the pericardium, and that just protects the heart. You can notice that when you look inside your rat. You'll have to remove it to get inside the heart and dissect it. This is a sheep heart, so this is what a heart looks like. like. So what parts of the heart do you actually need to know? Well, you might remember from grade 8 that this is the right atrium, the left atrium, the right ventricle and the left ventricle and you'll notice they are on opposite sides of what you think is right and left so make sure you always remember not to confuse that and if you look at this animation you'll notice blue blood comes into the right side of the heart and gets pumped to the lungs and red blood comes into the left side of the heart and gets pumped to the body so the right side of the heart is pumping what we call deoxygenated blood um, the symbol for that is DO2. So because the right side of the heart is pumping deoxygenated blood to the lungs, we call that the pulmonary system. So whenever you see pulmonary, think lungs. The left side of the heart, on the other hand, is pumping red blood, oxygenated blood, to the whole body, and we call that the systemic system. So let's now talk about the atria. The atria are the receiving chambers, so they receive the blood from the body and from the lungs. The right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body and it gets that blood from either the superior vena cava or the inferior vena cava. The left atrium on the other hand receives blood, fresh red oxygenated blood from the lungs and it receives those from the pulmonary veins. Next we'll talk about the atrioventricular valves also known as the AV valves. On the right side of the heart we call this the tricuspid valve and that's because it has three cusps. One, two, three. The AV valve on the left side of the body is called the bicuspid valve and that's because it has only two cusps. So what is the job of the AV valves? Well they separate the atria from the ventricle and when the atria contracts the AV valves open and blood gets pressed from the atria into the ventricle and when the ventricle contracts that valve closes so the blood can't go backwards so the valve opens and blood goes from the atrium into the ventricle but it can't go backwards this is what an actual valve looks like inside a cow heart you can see the three cusps here so the tricuspid valve has one, two, three cusps, which is why it's tri, it's on the right, and the bicuspid has two valves. The next part you need to know is the chordae tendinae. The chordae tendinae are the tendons that connect the valves to the muscles. Here they are inside the heart and inside an actual heart. So they're like tendons, and they keep the valves from inverting, flipping inside out, when the ventricles contract. You also have the papillary muscle. So here's the papillary muscle here, and it's connected to the chordae tendinae, which is connected to the valve. So there's the papillary muscle and it just holds and supports the chordae tendinae. Now if you have a normal heart valve, this is what it would look like when it was open and closed, but if you have a heart murmur, it might be because your valve doesn't open properly, it might be because it doesn't close properly. 
Ventricles are called the sending chambers because they send the blood either to the lungs or to the body. So when the right atrium contracts, it pushes blood through that tricuspid valve and it goes into the right ventricle. And when the ventricle contracts, that tricuspid valve is slammed shut and it won't open anymore. But at the same time, the, this other valve opens, the pulmonary valve opens, and so blood gets sent towards the lungs through what we call the pulmonary trunk, which is a T-shaped blood vessel. So you can see here the pulmonary trunk. You come up through the pulmonary valve and you either go left or go right in this pulmonary trunk. And the pulmonary trunk branches into the pulmonary arteries, and these pulmonary arteries are deoxygenated. They're one of the only artery in the body that carries deoxygenated blood. It takes that blood to the alveoli in the lungs, and this is where gas exchange happens. So the CO2 is exchanged for fresh oxygen, and then the pulmonary veins will take that oxygen back into the heart, into the left atrium. As you can see here, if this is the heart, from the right ventricle, you either go left or right in the pulmonary trunk into the pulmonary arteries and back through the, there's two pulmonary veins on each side and both of those dump directly into the left atrium. So what actually carries the oxygen? What hemoglobin? And when that protein hemoglobin carries oxygen, we call it oxyhemoglobin. The symbol for that is HbO2, oxyhemoglobin, hemoglobin that's carrying oxygen. So there's two different systems you need to know and remember. The pulmonary system, it carries blue blood, deoxygenated blood to the lungs, and this is the right side of the heart that controls the pulmonary system. The systemic system is where we carry blood to the body, it's oxygenated, and it's the left side of the heart that controls the systemic system. Septum is the next part you need to know. It's this big muscle that separates the left ventricle from the right ventricle. It's a thick muscle and basically just prevents the blue blood, the deoxygenated blood, from mixing with the fresh oxygenated blood. Some people are born with a hole in their septum. If you're born with a hole in your septum, what happens is your deoxygenated blood and your oxygenated blood mix. And it's, this is very inefficient because your left side of your heart is pumping a lot of deoxygenated blood back around the body when it doesn't need to. So you get this mixing of the blood, it's not efficient and harder to get oxygen to all the parts of your body. So when your left atrium contracts, it will push blood through the bicuspid valve and into the left ventricle. When the left ventricle contracts, it closes that valve and it opens the next valve, which is called the aortic valve. It's called the aortic valve because it heads into the aorta, or the, into the aortic arch that arches around the top of the heart. Now the left ventricle is much, much thicker than the right ventricle, and you'll notice this when you're dissecting your heart and you press the left ventricle. It's much tougher, much harder to press, and that's because it has to pump blood to the whole body, not just the lungs, which are right there, which is what the right side has to do. It pumps blood to the entire body, so it has a bigger job to do. Here we're looking at the aortic arch. This is the biggest artery in your body, and it arches over top of your heart, and it'll send blood to the upper parts of your body. It branches off. This branch takes the blood to the left arm and chest area. This branch takes the blood to the right arm and chest area. And these two vessels take blood to the brain through the carotid artery, which is on either side of your neck. If the blood loops over the arch and behind the heart and comes down underneath it, that's the dorsal aorta, and that takes blood to all the lower parts of your body. It takes blood to the head, to the arms and the lungs, and one that we didn't mention is the coronary artery also branches off. It doesn't show it in this picture, but it's the very first branch that comes off of the aorta. So you can see here the coronary arteries are the arteries that take blood directly to the heart itself because of course your heart needs oxygen as well, and so it comes right off the very beginning of the aorta and it branches all around the heart, feeds oxygen to your heart. Here's a real heart, this is what it actually looks like. And of course the 
blue veins that you see pictured here are coronary veins and they take blood back to the vena cava and go directly back into the right side of the heart. If either coronary arteries are blocked then you'll probably end up with heart disease or even a heart attack. So what are the vena cava? The vena cava are the biggest veins in your body. There's the superior vena cava which brings blood from the upper part of your body back to the heart and the inferior vena cava brings blue blood, deoxygenated blood, from the lower part of your body back to the right atrium of the heart. So they bring deoxygenated blood from the top and bottom of your body and dump it into the right atrium so it can be sent off to the lungs to get some oxygen. There's different names for these. The other name for superior vena cava is anterior vena cava. Make sure you know both those terms. And the inferior vena cava is also known as the posterior vena cava. Let's see if we can look at the outside of a heart and figure out the parts. There's the superior vena cava, the coronary artery, the right atrium, the right ventricle, and the inferior vena cava. One thing you need to know about the atria is when you look at your real heart, they're kind of like little flaps. The right ventricle, as compared to the left, will be a lot more squishy, not as solid. Here we've got the aortic arch. There's the T-shaped pulmonary trunk, the coronary vein, and the left ventricle. Here's what those parts actually look like on a real heart, so much harder to identify when it's not all color-coded for you. So you'll have to actually stick your fingers inside the heart, figure out first where the left ventricle is on your heart dissection, and poke your fingers through all the tubes to figure out where they're actually going. So let's look at this heart and we're going to figure out what the order is as, as the blood moves through the heart. So we start at the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. I'm numbering these as we go. They both bring blood into the second part, the right atrium, which will push it through the third part, the tricuspid valve. That will go into the right ventricle, number four, which will press through the pulmonary valve, number five, into the pulmonary trunk, number six, and then into the left and right pulmonary arteries, which I'll number both of them, number seven. The blood will head to the lungs. I'm adding the lungs, number eight, the left lung and the right lung, where they'll get some fresh oxygen. So now we're changing from blue blood to red blood, oxygenated blood. So the left and right pulmonary veins are both number nine. Both of those will dump into number 10, the left atrium. and that will move through the bicuspid AV valve, number 11, and into the left ventricle, number 12, which will press blood through the aortic valve, number 13, and into the aortic arch, number 14. Now the aortic arch will either pump blood to the upper part of the body through these tubes, or the lower part of the body, so we'll call that number 15, will be sending blood to the upper part of the body, i.e. carotid arteries, or down behind the heart through the dorsal aorta, which will send blood to the lower part of the body. Make sure you know that order. Here's an actual heart opened up, and you can see all of those papillary muscles, coordinate tendine valves, and again, poke your fingers through all those holes and try to figure out which side of the heart is which and what all of those vessels are. Are they arteries or are they veins? So make sure you come to class next day with all of your hot questions about the anatomy of the heart.